are currently on our way to CERN. We are specifically going to go and walk around the LHCb experiment. As you are all aware, I am a gravitational wave astronomer, so particle physics is not my strong point, but we are being guided by the wonderful Hi. Amir, who was on our YouTube channel just recently, so check out his video if you haven't already. And we also have an amazing person, Nicholas. Hello. <laughs> who was also on our YouTube channel, so check him out. So I'm gonna be vlogging and showing you what it's like to be going around CERN. So I hope you enjoy. got into Geneva at 10 o'clock this morning around then and we have just spent the day in Geneva it's been really lovely had the best lasagna ever um, in this really lovely cafe we are now in France we have just crossed the border uh, those markers stones tell you we've just crossed into France it's crazy to think how big this experiment is. It crosses two countries, France and Switzerland. Can I just say, I didn't realize how pretty. We are walking along this road and there are mountains to the left and mountains to the right, and it's just so stunning. So just so you know, Amir is giving us exclusive access into the LHCB experiment. So for those that would come here normally, so you can get public tours, but because we know Amir, he is gonna give us a private tour around the LHCB experiment. And guess what? You're coming with us, so we hope you enjoy. Right, um, welcome to CERN. So CERN stands for the Contel European Research Nuclear which in English means European Organization of Nuclear Research. And the main thing that we do here, as mentioned in the name, is nuclear physics. But that was back in the 1960s when it was first made. We f uh, we've moved on from nuclear physics into mostly focusing on particle physics. And particle physics is really interested in studying how the universe works, what the universe is made of, and how everything in the universe interacts with one another. The main way that CERN studies these fundamental interactions is by using very large machines that collides two protons together and there's a couple of machines here at CERN that does that which most famous of them all is the LHC so the LHC is the one that provides the protons for the experiments to use and one of the experiments you're visiting right now is LHCb which is the Large Hadron Collider Beauty Experiment and today in this tour guide we'll be showing you exactly how the LHC gives the protons collisions to the LHCb experiment and we'll also take a better look at how the LACB actually sees the results of those collisions. And afterwards, we'll actually be able to visit the detector downstairs, which is going to be really fun. So let's all go in now. So as mentioned before, there's mainly two parts in a particle physics experiment. There is one machine that accelerates the protons and collides the photons, uh, the protons for us. And there's another machine that sees the resulting collision and sees the output of that collision and does meaningful physics with it. Here, this explains to you the LET side or the Large Hadron Collider side. And this is the bit that runs the collision and collides protons for us. So this is how it works. So in the beginning, um, uh, protons from a hydrogen bottle get stripped off their electrons and they're shoved into a LINAC, which is a linear accelerator. The fast protons are then swirling around in many different boosters that increase the energy of the protons steadily one by one. At this stage, this is what we call the SPS or the super proton synchrotron. 
do give it up to a higher energy and once it's at a fast energy as you can see in the back it's swirling around the large hadron collide and collision collider and that is what ramps it up to its nominal energy of about 13 TeV in its center of mass energy and basically at that energy and speeds, that is what the protons are colliding. So once the protons are already circulating at the beam at the correct energy, we need to actually prepare the beam for collisions. This is done by um, squeezing the beam into small bunches that are easier for us to collide. Once the beams are squeezed and adjusted, this is what we call a stable beam. And by then, this is when the LHC gives us the go ahead to actually start collecting data and start colliding protons. When the protons are actually being collided, um, a bunch of people here behind me are working in the control room, which are shifts. And the job that they do is basically they're there to monitor the data input that comes from the LACB detector itself. They're making sure that everything we're seeing makes sense and it's fine and it's exactly what is expected. So they're just here to make sure that the run experiment is running as smoothly as possible and they're doing this 24-7. We saw before, the LAT provides the collisions of the protons for us. And now the job of LATB, we are supposed to be taking those collisions and making sense of the data. But how do we actually do that? Well, when we collide particles together, a bunch of particles spit out. But to do meaningful physics with that, we need to know a few things about that particle. Mainly, where it is and how far it's going, the energy of the particle or its momentum, as well as what kind of particle it is. So let's take a look at how the collisions actually work. If you look here, this is the LATB detector, showing here in its full glory. Right here is where the protons collide, which is interesting because unlike other experiments, the protons are colliding at the very far end of the detector. And this is our detector in full. So yes, that is where it detects. So when it collides, it goes into this little module we call the vortex, or the vortex indicator. So for example, we have a proton-proton collision that produces some kind of particle. There's two particles, for example, produced here. And these two particles go flying out through the detector. Um, these two particles leave tracks in the bellow. So you can see that as the particles fly past, they're putting in hits in the bellow stations right here. So that is what the velo is for. That's what we call the vertex locator, and it's one of the best de um, sub-detectors out there, and it's able to accurately measure exactly where the particle is and where it's going, right at the moment of collision, when it's closest. So this was the Delphi experiment. This is an experiment that was the predecessor of LETB. So before this entire thing was running, we have a little experiment. We have a ring called LEP, which is the large electron proton. Basically what that means is instead of colliding protons as we're doing right now, we're colliding electrons and positrons before because that was easy to handle. And Delphi is one of the experiments that read the data from the electron-proton experiments. The nice thing about this Delphi thing is it's pretty much mostly intact and we can actually see it get close to it later when we get down there, which is really exciting. So that was after we saw Delphi. Now we want to see the LATB experiment behind this door. 
But to get to the LATV experiment, you actually have to go through a very long tunnel of concrete because all of this is the concrete shielding that prevents any radiation in the LATV detector and the uh, LAT in general. It prevents radiation from there coming over here. So this thing is a giant shield of radiation that protects anyone who works here from the radiation in there, even when it's running. So in principle, and a lot, this happens a lot actually, anytime something goes wrong with the detector, a bunch of experts actually come down to this service area, do whatever they need to do, and then come back while that thing is still highly radioactive. So now, we will be seeing exactly how thick the concrete shielding is. This right here is the actual tunnel that leads straight to the surface where all the detector components from LATV are lowered down by crane and then they're assembled right here. Hello, um, we have just finished walking around the LHCB experiment. As you can see, it's just behind us. It's been so interesting. Amir is an amazing tour guide. What I learned is that in this collaboration, there is around 1,300 people working on this experiment, which is crazy to think how many people are working together. Another fun fact is I didn't even uh, know that there was something called a beauty quark or a petra and tetra quark. So I've learned two, no, three more particles that I wasn't aware of before. Um, so that's been very interesting. Anyway, we are off to have some sushi now. So see you later.